Uh, good evening. This is the May 13, 2014 Board of Water Commissioners meeting here in Raleigh. And uh, in attendance today is uh, two of the three water commissioners, Stuart Delzell and Timothy Toomey, and our staff. Um, first order of business is a review the draft of abatement policy. I know Karen made a lot of effort in here. You can just go through it. Sure, sure. Um, what uh, is happening is people are calling Penetech um, and asking, you know, what, what's the policy for an abatement? And there isn't one. So um, it's kind of been handled on a case-by-case -case basis. So what this is, is this is an effort to streamline that process. So what I did is I looked at um, Penacheck's policy and I looked at some other um, Massachusetts water uh, uh, department policies, I think I looked at Lexington, and I came up with, with a draft of first page is an application which someone would um, complete if they, you know, if they thought they were entitled to an abatement. Um, and then the second two pages are basically the policy on, um, on abatements or adjustments of water use charges. So um, basically this goes through a procedure by which a customer can request an abatement of water charges or request for adjustment if the customer is not satisfied with the information that's provided by Penacheck. And basically what, what happens is someone calls and they say, I got a water bill, it's really high, you know, I don't think it's right. And what, what's happening is, you know, Penacheck is trying to triage um, and, and they're getting some pushback. Um, you know, they'll, I think they have a list that they go through. Well, you know, have you noticed, you know, you have a leaking faucet? Have you noticed you have a toilet that's running? Um, that's the first thing that, you know, they try to do to, you know, help the residents um, identify, you know, why the water bill is so high. And, you know, the most important thing is if they have, in fact, had a leak, that, you know, they need to locate the leak and fix it. And, you know, a lot of times this is going to involve a plumber. Um, but Penacheck does try to kind of go through a list of things. Um, and when I spoke with, the, uh, with our water operators today, they said, you know, this is pretty much the same thing that they would do, um, is try to identify what the course of the problem is. So they need to kind of figure out, yes, they have a problem, and fix the problem on a timely basis. Because you can't really have three or four water bills that are really high and say, now I want you to abate these. Um, you know, I, I finally decided that I have a problem. So, you know, we want the customers to identify that they have a problem and then figure out what that problem is and get it fixed. Um, they can um, also apply, you know, to, or uh, request that the meter be inspected um, or reread. If they go out and reread the meter, you know, that, that's one thing. But if the customer thinks that the meter is faulty, there's a policy um, from your bylaws that basically says that they take it out, they send it in, it gets tested, and if it's, you know, within a certain um, standard deviation, then they'll adjust the bill. But if not, if it turns out the meter is correct, then the customer has to to pay for that whole process, which is about $115. We send it out to a company and then basically pass along the charges. Um, so basically, um, they've identified, OK, mm -hmm. I had a leak. I've now got the leak fixed. But I had this really big water bill for one month. And the policy that I'm proposing here is that this customer would request an abatement on this form. They would include you know, some documentation that they've gotten the leak fixed. And then what would happen is Penacheck would uh, take this request, they would say, um, okay, we're looking back at the water usage for the, this month in the three years previous. So say, you know, they'd used 1,000 gallons in April, the last three years, and, you know, they got a bill for 2,000 gallons. 
they've gotten this fixed. Well, as an act of good faith in this policy, what they would do is they would take the $2,000, subtract the normal use of $1,000, and then the $1,000 that's left would be split between the customer and the water department. Um, you could do this once every three years. And that way, everyone would you know, be subjected, not subjected, but um, subject to the same standards. Mm -hmm. and, and it would be a process. So you would get something from Penacheck that says, OK, Board of Water Commissioners, you know, Joe Smith at you know, 502 Central Street had a leak. He's provided this documentation. We calculated it. Um, we're recommending that you know, based on this policy, you give him an abatement of x dollars. Then you would sign it, it would go back to Penacheck, and they would inform the customer and credit the customer's account. And that way, you've got a standard policy. Um, you know, you're not evaluating things on a case-by-case -case basis. And it gives, you know, it, it gives the customers a loop. You know, they know what's going to happen. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that, that's basically um, the draft okay. that you've got. So, you know, if you want to discuss it, if you want to, you know, take a little more time to look at it, um, and then maybe at your next meeting, vote on it. Well, I have a few uh, things on it. I put that right away. So, it's good right. that you get the chance to. This, this is a fair way to handle this instead of on a case by case basis. Everyone gets treated the same. You, you really should have policies in place because, um, you know, if you go to the assessor's office and you have the same kind of issue, there's a policy in place that you have to follow. And, um, and when you don't have a uniform set of rules and things are subjective and, uh, you know, people can feel like, well, how come he got the, the abatement and I didn't? But if you have a standard set of rules and policies, it's quite easy to defend it. It's also helped with communication, and that's what we're finding. We need to improve the communication um, so that people know, you know, and this is a, a will be a tool mm -hmm. and a system to follow. Yeah. And it will make everyone's life easy from karma to I you know, this this these are the this is the process we need to follow. And um, you know the lack of policies always leads to problems. Uh, you know, I know that in yeah. in my many years in, in my position. So the more policies that are clearly written um, that are in place, the better for all involved. Yeah, I, I, I'm 100% agreement with you. I, just, um, I just have a few comments, uh, and I wrote it down on the thing. Maybe we could include them. And just in the meantime, the board could uh, take these home and review them you know, to make sure we can f finalize them. But the comment I have, and I'm looking for your uh, input too, Karen, is. Mm -hmm. uh, on the first paragraph, right about that location right there, it says here, uh, if the abatement is sought for relief due to a leak, please provide a plumber's invoice showing, and I'd like to include right there, repair dates and that the leak has been fixed. Okay. On the first page, uh, we need to address this uh, Three dollar thing. That's we got to do some research on that. Yeah. It might be that uh, I don't think the intent was a flat charge. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't know. I cut and paste that out of the 2013 rules and regulation, yeah. and it made no sense to me. No, either. it didn't. But so let's so. let's look at that and consider uh, putting the price to perform the test on the water meter. Right. Whatever the actual yeah. cost is, plus. It's uh, roughly 115. Let's just put it in that little. Cover. Right. Right. So we can just get rid of that then. Get, no, we'll the, take the three dollars I mean, and substitute. Yeah, off, yeah. But the, substitute that with you know yeah. more explanation about yeah. the charge for the meter because that would be reimbursable if they performed the test on the uh, meter and that the, the meter was faulty, then we would pay for the meter because that's part of our maintenance. That's know. correct. If it was not faulty, then it's something. You know, right. We don't want to you know we would help them try to find a leak in. Right. on your property, but we're not going to spend uh, much, much valuable time in doing that. So right. he would have to get a, a, a plumber mm -hmm. involved. The other thing is um, it might be worth it, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. if there's another appropriate place in the bylaws 
uh, to uh, say what the response of outlining responsibilities for repair. You know, when this if it's like it's a leak, if it's related to a leak or something. Um, I'm thinking that we should specify that anything from the fitting side of the uh, meter toward the customer's house is their responsibility to get that thing fixed. And the reason is, right, is yeah. that the, uh, when they do new construction, their plumber actually connects to our meter. So there always has been the rules for that. Yeah. Right. For the, from the meter in is on. Um, right. Um, what, what, is the, what is it called from the... The meter is the hours. Okay. Right, right, right. But, but I mean, the fitting that connects the pipe. The fitting, the street, the fitting at the street. I, I guess. Yeah, fitting. You're, you're, you're taking the curb stop. Okay. To the curb stop. In. Right. See, long driveways have the, the meter yeah. pit out yeah. on the street. Right. Where a lot of people have it in the summer. Yeah. Curb stop. That's what I meant. Right, but it is from the curb stop. So if you, you know, if you have a meter pit out at your driveway. And you know the leak is somewhere. There, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So curb stop is the. Right. So it's really you know. You but if you have it in your cellar, you're responsible from the meter into your house. Right. You're not responsible for out of the meter. You're not. Okay. You sure? I'm positive. You will get what now? The rules. So the meter from. From the meter, in. Is the responsibility of the homeowner. Okay. Unless they, you know, we do something. Yeah. Not from the meter. You go back in the rules and bylaws, and you'll see that it's from the meter in. The house is here. Curves All depends, you know, I mean, a lot of people got a long driveway and they got a, the meter is out at the street. I understand that. But the older houses, we got it in the cellar. I understand that. The curb stops here and the house is here. The meter's in the basement. You get a leak on your lawn. That's up to the that, customer. That's up to the town. So, no, it isn't. Always was. Let's go. Let's let's just look at that. Research. So we can clarify that. Let's yeah, go into the bylaws that. and yeah, make sure that thing is because okay. Well, whatever, whatever it is, it, I believe that the uh, contractor that ties into the our system has a fitting that gets involved there. That he actually makes the fitting, makes the connection. That, that's okay. Okay. So if you know the, the connection is messed up, he's the last person mm -hmm. contractor for the homeowner is the one right. that has, has touched that. So Roy's saying that the, uh, you know, it might be that it's from the meter, but I don't know. Let's just check the bottom. Well, we can check that, yeah. Because okay. mm -hmm. I don't know if... Um, why, is it, why is it the water department? They have a leak in the lawn, they told them. Why is it the house yet? What? It has to get the house yet. No, you can get a meter on the cellar. Let's check that and let's, yes. let's move on. Right. So those are the comments I have. We could just take a look at this and maybe sure, make sure that we, you know, get our uh, bylaw uh, facts straightened up. Okay. Right, and we can uh, discuss it at the next meeting after. Yeah. If you have any comments? If you have comments, you know, you'd like to have Carmen send me beforehand so well, I can yeah. have answers. So I don't know if there's a specific policy that regards uh, uh, repairs on. Uh, I'm sure there is yeah. somewhere in here. Okay. I'd like to see this language on the plumber's invoice changed a bit because uh, just for example the tank on the back of the toilet is, is one of the most common leaks in the house yep. and you put the don't want to put the new uh, right. rubber stock in there like nothing so we're not getting a problem with that. Or so just a, an invoice, a receipt. Yeah, yeah the, the interest of, that I was putting in there for the detail would be the notice that uh, you know if they're aware of a leak and they address it immediately, then they should be up for consideration for an abatement from us because their their prompt action is well appreciated for both water conservation and uh, right. you know uh, our ability to uh, grant them stuff. So that's but mostly the dates one would to say too on that. Yeah. So. I can adjust that. Soon. Okay. If this is a new one. We got after 50 days. It should be until the next meeting. You know what I mean? In case we. You know, for some reason we don't have a meeting for three weeks or four weeks. You know what I'm saying? Okay, on the second page, Karen, yeah. it says up to 15 days, and then maybe put uh, a, a little um, sub note there, that, or at the um, next meeting, whichever. Uh, Let's see, where? First paragraph, uh, the bottom of the first paragraph on the second page. Okay. 
You know, just in case we don't have a meeting for, you know, for three weeks or four weeks for some reason, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, but it's when they contact Pemchik and say, you know, I have an issue. That's kind of what I was, you know, not, because it may take a month to get to you because of the meeting schedule. Right, they have to request to come in front of the board within 15 days. Yeah, maybe not, not actually physically come oh, before the board. Just put a, maybe make that sentence a little clearer, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from Superintendent? Oh, no, I, I think that you need, to, you need to have a policy in place just to streamline this. Okay, good idea. So we have more on the board of our agenda. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't have an agenda, so I was handed this, but this, I think, was Mr. Rickers. I don't have an agenda on the package, so I can take this one, yeah. Thank you. Update on customer issues. Um, I spoke with, uh, with Pedicek regarding the two letters from last week, and with regard to... The issue um, excuse me. With regard to the issue at 63 Central, Penichek followed up um, and they were going to uh, they were going to do a data log for that. Um, and uh, the diet is not showing. So that that's in process. Okay. Um, who who is actually reading the meetings now? Is it time check or is it the No, you guys, guys still are. Yeah. Because everybody's complaining that you know in the last two months the gallons are going up drastically. I mean, I got my bill yesterday. Mine went up twenty five hundred gallons. It was and a all longer. Of a sudden, it was five days longer. In the meter reading period this past month, but even like my, my sister was saying this morning, I stopped and this is what I heard, and um, she went up 500 gallons. She was in the hospital for two weeks, so there was no washing done or anything else. So I don't know if it maybe we need to have that thing tested that's in the pickup. The I, I think you know. it's it's the time, it's the time, you know, the number of days that I think there are five extra days. Yeah, the selectman <coughs> actually said that last night. They made, made an announcement mm -hmm. that there was. Uh, Five extra days added on to the to the. It water just seems like there's so many people saying something. That, you know, right, they, they right, have a lot more right. gallons. Because you know, it has to do with. I mean, some people two thousand, some are three thousand, some five hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, it has to do with you know the fact that you know you've got almost an extra week in this reading <clears> because <throat> they read on you know the last it's the last Tuesday or Wednesday of the mm -hmm. month, and depending on you know how that compares with the last Tuesday of the previous month. You know, you could have anywhere from you know twenty eight to thirty five days, and I'm pretty sure it was a thirty five days. Thirty five days. Yeah, yeah. If you look on the um, uh, on the bills, it'll show you your readings for the past twelve months. So if you look at you know kind of where you were last year, um, mm -hmm. I was looking at one, and and it does go up because this does tend to be a longer cycle. So I, I, I'm thinking that's probably why, right? Um, with regard to uh, Cindy Lane, they went out and they did a data logger, and there was, in fact, usage through the meter of very high amounts um, back in March. So that's the response. Um, okay. So I, uh, in the comments, it said. As this letter to the board indicates, the builder found the outside faucet on on two occasions. Upon the second incident, they turned the faucet off from the inside. Um, so this is, you know, this is a, a case where you know you would probably recommend that he request an abatement because the water was used 
Um, you know, I don't, I have, I have no idea how, but it looks like something was potentially left on. Mm -hmm. And if you nobody was there. Yeah. 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 Was he involved at the time? It's, new con it's a new construction mm -hmm. station. It's, it's an unoccupied building. Yeah. Yes, I know home. Nobody lived in it. Right. But, you know, it sounds like maybe, I don't know if it was a, a contractor or, like you said, you know, somebody yeah, outside. Yeah, that's a lot of water. So, um, so I mean, I guess the rec my recommendation would be that, you know, he request an abatement from the board. Well, he doesn't have any history, so, yeah. I don't know. So, you get, the, the policy you just brought up is he could have half from the previous thing, so half of... I, I think what they do is, is if there's no history, um, you know, they can, I think there are like um, industry standards for how much, you know, this, this home would be, you know, say the size of a family of four people. And there's, I think, industry standards on how much water a household of this size would use. You know, when you don't have any data, you have to kind of, kind of guesstimate. For me, I always put the difference. Okay, so I'm, at, I'm open for, uh, yeah. you know, motions. Well, he, he needs to yeah, request... Yeah, he's going to request an abatement. Yeah, request an abatement and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's just, you know, yeah. move him on. Yeah, so we that. And then we'll... Um, I'll ask that that be communicated and then um, that can be uh, voted on at your next meeting. I have a question, Karen. Mm -hmm. Somebody puts a check for the water bill in, in the box at the town hall yeah. on the, over the weekend, yeah. the 20th. Uh, and they're not given credit for it until the 28th, so they lost the discount. That, that shouldn't be because we collect everything and anything that comes in for the water department, um, Carmen picks up. Mm -hmm. I, I know uh, before Laura, what she did is if the the day it ended, like on the weekend, she always gave people till Monday. You know, right. She went out getting stuff out of the block and downtown hall, whatever. Right. But they always yeah, had. Exactly. After exactly. collecting the mail. And, and I think, Carmen, when you send the checks to Penacheck, you mark the date received. that they came in. So they know that, you know, they were received and they should get the discount. Well, you know, I just, this incident happened to me last week, as I, two weeks ago, I brought a uh, check. I wrote a check on the 30th to get my discount for the power company. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't quite get over there that day, but I brought it over there the following day. Mm -hmm. And they said, it's too, too late. Built the uh, computer programs closed. So they charged me the full rate. So, right. yeah. so there's no gross grace period over there. So I know, Laura, if it was on a weekend or a holiday right. weekend or whatever, right. she I mean, got until she collected the stuff Monday morning. Right. And, and what, we, what um, we did this month is, you know, the last day of the month is on a weekend so if you look the due date of the bills this month is june 2nd right and so it'll be the next business day right yeah. right so i mean that that's the way that that we've treated it um, if the person that you're talking um to you know called penacheck do you know if they have i don't know okay uh, because if it was left in town hall it would go the next day to carmen and, and should have, um, you know, received the discount if it was, you know, in the proper time frame. So um, that would, you know, if you called them and or if she or he called them, that would be something that they could adjust. Okay. You know, they could take a look at, at the records. Well, that's good to know. We can we can be more customer friendly. You know, I was just hoping maybe the power company could do the same, but I guess not. Well, you were talking about a weekend here versus yeah. the, you know. A business day at a deadline, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm customer uh, satisfaction. Okay. Any other? Uh, uh, we had an inquiry today from someone who actually called my office, and I think uh, they spoke with the selectman's office uh, about two two high bills. Um, and you know they suggested that she check for running toilets, other leaks, and 
you know, ba basically they can tell her that, yes, you have high readings, here are some things that you should check. And in this case, you know, the customer dismissed the idea that she had a leak. So, you know, I, I don't know where you tell people to go from there. You know, no, I don't have a leak. Or what we all these engines on, figure down that. Graph, yeah, the graph thing, yeah. Well, Plus, they usually sometimes they'll give them tablets, put like in the toilets, to see if the guy runs into the the bowl pot, you know, from the tank. That right. That tells you like the thing inside the toilet is leaking by. Sometimes it doesn't leak a lot, but it's enough to, you know, in 30 days it uses some water. And, oh, a, a running toilet uses a ton of water. Right. Um, you know, the problem is now that, you know, we're going to have two operators. Um, the data logger will, you know, tell you that you use the water and when you use the water, but not where you use the water. Um, so that, you know, it, it's kind of a limitation of that. Um, well, I think but, what we've done also is that the uh, the guys have gone in and uh, tried to troubleshoot a little bit, but not, you know, too extensively. You know. Uh, like what's the meter, around the meter, yeah. see if there's any drip. So he would probably have the tablets in the truck and he would say, okay, we'll do this and check this. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, in a leak, you can really tell there's a leak going on because you can hear it. You know, you hear a lot of leaks. Yeah. Not all of them. Not the small, the small ones you can't hear. But I mean, with the tablets, <coughs> well, the intermittent ones on the toilet you can't hear. So. Right. But with the tablets, I mean, is that something that, given the fact that you know we're going to have two operators, is that something that a customer could come down here, pick up, and, mm -hmm. and do themselves? Yeah, he's going to put it in the, in the tank in the back. Okay. And you, you, he, he could either pick it up or leave it for so many hours that he would. Or if he, he if he goes down uh, to do the data logger, he's going to be there. So. He, well, I'm thinking we're, we're, we're having issues with time for day loggers. It takes them about, they told us, about 30 to 45 minutes. But if the dye is something that Penacheck could say, what we recommend is if you don't you know, think you have a leak, this is something you can try. Yeah. Go to the water department, they'll give you this. Now they, uh, your toilet I know bowl. one of the people that have a problem with one of theirs, um, yeah. they talked to Penacheck, and they told them they could use um, the food color and stuff. Mm -hmm. to try that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically the same as what I can't yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Right. Because we you know we want we want to help the customers, but you know, given the fact that you know you're short staffed, we want, you know, things that we want to empower these people to could try themselves yeah. and you know okay. eliminate yeah. some of the things or, or identify some well, things that could that could be an issue. So you have those here, yes. Carmen? Yes. So okay, I will let Penacheck know that that's an option. And you know, the other thing is, you know, one of the commissioners sometimes goes out, you know, in the interest of trying to help people out. I mean, I've gone out a couple of times just to see what they were talking about. They had some issues with uh, a leak or, you know, rusty water, one of the um, apartment complexes. And I went over and I looked at it, too, to try to help them out. So it's, it, if one of us is available, I think, you know, we could actually, you know, you know, as a courtesy, do something like that. So we've done that in the past. And we're all here just trying to help each other out. All right, any other customer issues? Uh, not that uh, are on my list. Okay. Um, purchase orders. 25. You know, I was just going to say, Karen and I are on a very tight time frame. Is that something you guys could take up after we leave? Oh, certainly. We can do that. Postpone that. Okay, appointment of Peter King as primary water operator. Okay, that um, I spoke with Mr. King and Mr. Um, Swinniarski you know, this past week, and then uh, they worked it out that they thought that maybe uh, Peter would be um, a good candidate to, um, in a temporary basis, to handle the uh, primary water operator. So Rob was interested in it. Rob had the opportunity. No, he wasn't interested in it. Yeah, he passed on it. And uh, so, uh, you know, that narrowed the, the field down to one. So I would, I would uh, expect that uh, I would take a, uh, well, a motion. I'll make that motion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Effective tomorrow, if you could, please, because we do want him to start working with Glenn and going over some things on the, in the database and so that. Um, as soon as possible. Okay. So we'll do that. And then is there a uh, wage action? 
We should have. I, I'll sign that. So as long as the vote is taken, I can execute that. Okay, good. So we have a motion by Mr. Ricker. Do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tim, can we move down to... Uh, Full business. Under the D, so um, ladies. Actually, I can, can I can I work on B, C, and D um, on your agenda? Old business B, solicitation regarding temporary water operator coverage for water treatment plant. So, um, um, we we obviously have some. Staffing needs, and we have some uh, issues because we, we're not sure when the water treatment plant is going to get online, and we have two water operators. Um, so uh, we have in place now an agreement with Weston Sampson uh, for not to exceed nine thousand five hundred dollars for contract services. We need to, to utilize some of that right away with Mr. Smith uh, leaving. He's taking some time off this week that he's eligible for and should take it. Um, and I know Tim has been scheduling these days. So we, um, we will use Weston and Samson to plug in some of this uh, time going forward. But we also need to think about now, I really think about uh, issuing a formal solicitation for help to provide assistance to cover, and we have that in the budget, the 25,000 for water tr uh, private treatment. Uh, we, we expect that we're gonna have to run a water treatment plant for uh, at least uh, 90 days all day long. So there's a person that's going to have to be down there all the time. And the summertime is spring and summer. It's very busy in the water department. So there's a lot of work that has to be done outside of that. So Have we, anybody we, applied for any of these jobs? Yes, I, I'll get that, to that in, in later on in my update here. So, I, uh, but, so in this case, though, outside of that, of the current situation, because we're going to have this extra work to do um, that I'm being told by the engineers, the DEP told us, uh, the, inve the inspector there, that at least 90 days that water treatment plant is going to run. So um, we, would, we can go out to uh, get prices from companies, do a solicitation. A lot of that would be paid out of the private treatment. It will also include some backup and fill-ins for some vacation and other time that the current two operators are eligible for and have some uh, planned um, time off for vacations and things like that. So outside of the Weston and Sampson situation, um, I, do, I am seeking authorization so that we can write up something, get it put out properly. There's a number of companies out there, the Water Board has recommended, uh, to get some some help in here, and it's funded. I, I'd, I'd like to see that we set it up for like 30 or 45 days at a time, you know, not something that's three months or four months or whatever. Yeah, there's just an uncertainty. See, you know, where we are, you know what I mean? Yeah, with an I, option for another 35 or 45 days. Exactly. Um, you know, it, you know, I, I use this scenario this afternoon. I, you know, we had a meeting with the operators today, and I said it's really, um, it's it's like a newborn. Uh, there's a separation issue. We have to be there with this new system every day for for uh, all day long. We can have a private company do that, and and. and so that the operators can do the work. They can certainly come in and check on things and make sure they're still connected with the whole situation. But, so you're gonna be there together and we have to work on a gradual situation where, you know, we were told clearly that this is a self-sufficient operation. This will run and, and there's a number of backup situations with the SCADA system and everything else to um, alert those that need to be alerted for any system failures. So. We, we need to look at this, but the problem is I think it's going to be a gradual. So it'll be, you know, a little bit, a little bit, we'll, you know, we're there all the time, then we, we work down to a less, and then, and then you'll have a new water superintendent and have a broader idea of what your needs are. And the staff may have to change. That, that's why I'm saying if we do it for so we, many days. It, you know. we, don't have, we don't know what it's going to take, and that's what we've been asking for so many months from Weston and Sampson. What, what do we need here? What is appropriate? And there may be adjustments in the workforce here. I think it was uh, they may not. I don't know. Hour, I think it was when we had before. Exactly. Uh, but when Mark Griffin did your budget, he set aside that 25000 That's what he anticipated. We have that money in fiscal 14. We also have it in fiscal 15. He foresaw the need for that to handle the transition period. And I'm recommending now at this point we at least get the solicitation out 
in anticipation of hopefully having uh, the treatment plan up and running, and also for coverage above and beyond now what we have set aside for this um, interim situation with Austin and Samson to plug in some of the, the holes that we have now on the staffing. Okay. So if the board could kindly vote on that so we can proceed, well, that uh, would be a good step in the right direction. I, I think I'd like to see the, the, um, the RFP before you send it out. So. Is that something that's already in place, or you want us to No, I'm, I'm seeking authorization to, to start this. And well, I, I, I need, I I need think input it, from the primary water operator, yeah. and uh, you know on what on what some of the components of the work are. So I mean, we have to write it. Right. So I mean, the final draft going out would that be reviewed by the board? That would be reviewed by the board. Okay. Me, um, I'm right. not just the superintendent, but by the procurement officer. Okay. I may also show it to the board selectmen. Okay. Good. So do I have a motion to uh, get this ball rolling? I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Yeah, it's just for getting the stuff on, we voting for it. Good. Well, we'll get, she's going to go full bore on for developing a request for bids for, you know, providing treatment. What are you going to plan on putting out for, for days, I mean, a month, so? I don't know. I mean, I really, we have to work on it and, and put something together. So well, we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna, I'm okay to go like, 45 days or 60 days. Well, more um, than that. well, I would recommend that um, you're looking at, you need 90 days. And I, I don't know if the 25,000 is going to cover you for 90 That's what I mean. But just because it's data doesn't mean if, we have to use it. You know? if, um, well, you're gonna, I don't know how you're going to cover it. And I think what Mark Griffin was trying to do through this budget that you have is, is plan for that. Because mm -hmm. um, you're going to need coverage. Yeah. And, the, and the two employees that are working here are working long, long days. They have long days coming, and, and you just don't have any help. Right. So we need to get through this sooner rather than later. So What's the motion would be to just get this thing going so we would have the final review before it goes out the door. That's all. You know, and if you, you yeah. want it for Get this a, thing going right away. Run it for a, um, you know, an initial 40-day period with an option to continue. I mean, that, yeah. that, that, I'm all set with 60 days with an option. Because of the, the situation, is you just don't know. Yeah, so. Trailer never for months. We, we don't know nothing about that plan, how we'll, what it's going to take. And, and, so you it's know, and there's a comfort level when you want to well, we do know we do, we do know this, that the plant is capable of producing so many gallons of safe water. Okay, and it's just a matter of man, manning it up. But then we have the weekend issue. It's got to be running during the weekend. So it's stuff like that. We can't have these guys work on all week and then the weekend. Oh, I mean, we, we've got you know, people out there that we're, we're going to hire us. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of people, you know. So we need to get this thing going. We're going to hire you. You've got a license. I mean, you, you can cover shift soup, you know. So we're going we're gonna to review it before it goes out the door. And the, the, the desire is, you want 60 days or 45 days? I'm well, 60. Well, uh, you know, we, this, we can adjust this. You know, uh, you know we just want to uh, work on this and go forward. I'm not, like I said, I wasn't going to sit there. I have a lot of enough work to do. Oh, write yeah. something and yeah. say, this isn't what you want to do, even though you have a budget line that says this, and yeah. your former acting superintendent you know, we, we, advised you of this. Yeah. There's a number of people that we already know, another a number of companies that we already know that we're going to send this out to. So, yeah, there's, a, there's yeah. a list that you have, and that's fine. Um, so we need to do this yeah, sooner than we had later, but, you know, we'll be looking at it ago, before it goes out the door. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. So, so the, the, you second the motion? Yeah. And it's for uh, 90 days? 60. Oh, 60, okay. Yeah, well, we, we can... With the options. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. We can uh, start somewhere. All in favor? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Um, now we want to jump into... Um, the water uh, treatment plant construction update. So, um, Commissioner Dalzell, Karen Summit, Bob Mary is here, Selectman uh, Bob Mary, Vice Chairman of the Board. Uh, we met with the building inspector, the fire chief, um, John Sakura, the clerk of the works from Weston Sampson, John Hargraves, the water board's consultant on the project, um, <clears throat> and uh, the architect, David Steele who works for Weston and Samson, and um, uh, Chairman Bob Stone was there as well. So what we reviewed was um, and discussed was a Weston and Samson's response to Kinsman's letter of substantial completion. You know, they sort of made the declaration under the contract language that they were at substantial completion. Um, we 
disagree with that. I refer that to the town's attorney. Um, and uh, so I did get the town's attorney involved right away uh, because of my concerns on this. And she agreed that um, this, the Western and Sampson uh, substantial completion letter focuses solely on the water treatment plant unit. It uh, ignores the physical plant issues, which I, I identified when I initially called the building inspector about the gap between the ceiling and the wall. So there is a letter that went, and Carmine has made a copy, and, and I asked him to get it to the board right away. A response from John Sikora of West End Sampson on behalf of the town, and you've all had a chance to review this. I know Carmine, this has gotten to the board. You've um, seen this, right? I believe I did. Yes, I know that some got it on email and some didn't. But um, what they did now was prepare the punch list, which is required under the contract. And so they prepared their own punch list, and the what's called RDK engineers, uh, an outside engineering firm went in and found, um, I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, pages, 14 pages just from RDK mm -hmm. of things that uh, <laughs> weren't done correctly, weren't, you know, there's, there's a number of things. So if you look on, on some of those pages under RDK, you'll see there has to be a verification from subcontractors, general contractors. They have to sign off basically under the um, penalties of perjury that you know they've done what's required in those various items. So, and then Weston and Samson put together a, um, a whole punch list of things as well. And we reviewed that at the meeting today. Our intent today was to actually do a site inspection, but Kinsman um, apparently was too busy and uh, was not available to meet with us, which surprised me since they're the ones that issued the substantial completion and under the contract then the owner, which is the, uh, the town, has a right to go in there and inspect with the building inspector. But so at this point, things are, are kind of up in the air. This has gone over there. They have a number of things. They are on notice now. So it freezes everything, basically, we're, we're, um, in terms of the contract. Because I, I, as you know, Kinsman has you know, indicated that you know, they're not going to pay for uh, other things that are delayed regarding uh, well station five and that work. So they have to, um, we'll wait to see what happens, but I mean, so there's a number of issues. We can't occupy the building. So, you know, there's no way we can get an occupancy permit to get in there. The, the building inspector and the fire department even sign off for it, and the building's no windows. <laughs> there's, there's so many things here. So we're, we're a bit overwhelmed. We didn't realize that was the, the kind of list that we would be expecting to see. But um, I am happy to see that there is a list um, of things and that they did have a chance to finally talk to Ken Moore and hear his concerns. And he had a number of concerns, um, including the gap, which came up. So there'll be a revision to the Weston and Samson work list with some solutions on how to you know, rectify that. Um, so at this point, we're waiting to see what happens. The um, Paul membrane system has been um, put in storage. It should last about six weeks um, and should be able to be put if things work out and, and things get back on track and we can turn on the system and, and operate the plant. We probably not required to do any extensive water testing, but if it goes out too far, you know, there may, may be a number of water tests that we'll have to do to make sure um, that everything is at the right levels in the system. So we're hoping to avoid that. We're hoping to avoid any issues with the DDP if this gets right out. Okay. So that's the status of that. Okay, so it sounds like um, everybody's uh, closely connected and communicating so we can resolve this problem was the desire of the board last meeting? Well, um, you know, I don't think that the town has anything to resolve at this point. I mean, the town has done everything it's supposed to do. Kinsman, the well, I'm just saying, we have, do they have, do we have? Kinsman has the list. Yeah. We, yeah. The, the water board should not release any retainage based on this. And Weston and Samson is saying, no, you know, this is not a proper system. So they're finally agreeing with us. Uh, Weston and Samson um, agrees with the town and the town's attorney that um, 
that they've, they ignored the physical plant of the building and focused really only on the water treatment unit. Right. So while that may be working, the building itself has, as you can see, Perfect. significant issues. I mean, the problem, too, that it's worth noting is that uh, right now we, have, we really can't use well number three. No, everything is, there's nothing no. going on, so it's a day so by well day issue. So well fired and well two are supplying our water for the town, so. It's a day by day issue. Okay. So we really have to wait and see what this contractor does. No, so anybody up there doing anything at all? There's some landscaping duties or chores being done, and there's a few other things, but as far as I know, nothing more. Well, John Sephora yeah. indicated that there was some activity going on up in, the, in there, but the town isn't committed to, to go in there. So what, what is, uh, what, what's the next step? What are we going to hear from uh, uh, the contractor? Did we just send the balls on the contractor's yeah, comments? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, from there, we just uh, have to you know, accommodate any kind of changes that might be. Well, if, if it's, if we're, we're going to take it day by day, but I will be in touch with the town's attorney. I didn't have time to update her today. Uh, but if, if we have face serious uh, issues because of the, you know, the consent order with the DEP, you know, we may have to you know, get an injunction okay. and get the system up and running. Okay. And I'll work on that if I have to. Okay. But at this point, let's see, there's so many issues here. We can't get an occupancy permit to get our employees in there to do anything. There are a few things in here, minor, and there are many things in here, very, very serious. Okay. Okay, so just a, a couple of things I wanted to, to go over with you that Karen and I are working on. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I'll stop right here. Okay, I am selling uh, an unmarked uh, police cruiser that we are uh, rotating out of, our, out of service. So I was going to add the 1989 dump truck. Why? I thought the water board said that they were selling that. I, I've never heard that, but it's the first I've heard it. Oh. There's well, nothing wrong with the 89 dump truck, it's being fixed. Well, no, 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 no. Well, I'm about no, she, she's, she's talking, I think Debbie, Debbie's talking about the F-350 out here, not the dump truck. It's up back, and the utility body on it. I don't know. I, I, I'm going actually back to when John Reza had uh, asked me for some help in selling a vehicle. And I said, well, when I have one come up on the list, uh, and I can add both That's of them. a 99 that pick up those sales, not an 89. I, I thought it was an old, well, I went, to the, I went to the fleet schedule. This was the oldest one on there, and I didn't think we had No, the dump truck it came from the highway about. 1989, you still have that that you use? Yes, yeah, so it's the only dump truck we have, the big one. This this one you're referring okay. to, Debbie, so Daddy. Would you say a 99? Yeah, it's a 99. It's a 350 utility body over here. I don't know. Uh, year ago, we talked about advertising. There was a couple of ways to do it. Putting it out to bed. Yeah. It has on the night, but that's, that's the one. Which one? And that's 350, 99. The utility body on it. Okay, 99. This isn't on the agenda anyway, so maybe we can. Oh, this is my on. update. Um, you know, I, I'm selling now the unmarked uh, Crown Victoria. Mm -hmm. So we were successful selling uh, another one a few years and ago. And we're planning on keeping just, the plows on that like, pickup because we can put it on one of the other, the new pickups we have out here. Okay. Uh, the, I didn't, I wasn't selling it. Well, I no, I mean, it's kind I of a convoluted. Complicated uh, thing. Okay. The plow fits on that truck we're about to sell. It doesn't fit on the other trucks, so it's you know we, we're still investigating it. So. And that, is this what you what John Reza was talking about? Yeah, this is a long issue. This is an issue that's been tossed by, about several times. So I believe from '99 to '014, the trucks are the same. Well, okay, I, I'm going to wait for the board then. Yeah, I'll, just let's, you know, you know there's no rush. Yeah, yeah, I'm Obviously selling there's no things, rush. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, you, you got to get things done. We don't yeah. want vehicles that you pay insurance on that you don't use. They, what, what they took that off road, that's what the problem was. Everybody took it off on the road without saying anything to the board. So it, there's, there's no plate on it? Oh, wait. No, no. it's laying out. Well, I have, it, I have it on the insurance schedule. Oh, you do? I have a 99 
can I have a 1989? I went to the list, I said, this, the 1989 has to be the vehicle that this, that John mm -hmm. Resnick spoke to me about, because it's so wow. old. Um, I can't. Well, and then we just uh, look at this during the week and we'll just okay. put it off and wipe right. not in the meeting yet today. So. Kimmy, we've talked about this for a year now. Is that the same truck that the gas tank fell out of? That yes. is the one. Mm -hmm. Why have you got it sitting out there? Mm -hmm. Good question. I mean, it's a you know, take it down to the junkyard and get 400 bucks for it. They'll sell it. Talk to the. Uh, the uh, All children. Okay. I don't know, something that a, a, a gas <coughs> tank fell out of? Yeah, yeah, it was a year ago. They had to have, they told well, that which one is that? Well, exactly. What we suggest we do is we just bring this up at the next meeting and come up with a solution for that. All right, well, I have people on. in the staff in my office that are working on things, and I need to. I mean, I work on a schedule, and I have to get things done. So you know, we have to make decisions right or wrong. Was there a board? On for a year now. Was there a board vote that John Reza was operating under? And if so, what was the vote? Probably two or three votes. So there, there is an authorization to dispose of public property. Yeah. But to save the plow if we but wrote it, it up. It's the Ford 350. Wasn't it? You guys talked about that a, a year ago to take the plow frame off? And it happened about a year ago. Yeah. Nobody wants to spend any money to put the, the thing back on the other pickup. It's not what you put the thing. Well, I mean, I don't know what you're going to do with a plow. If you're not going to put it on the other pickup. It, it'll go on the 09. Well, well, fine. That's fine. But I, mean, I mean, the plow is six thousand dollars. Right. But if it's it'll so, why get rid of the plow when it will fit on another pickup? Don't be with it. But don't hold up the truck just because you got a plow sitting out there that you're not going to use until at least next December. Yeah, so, I suggest we talk about it at uh, a different meeting next week. <coughs> Tammy just said. She's on a schedule. I'll do it if you put a motion before me. Well, no, you apparently already voted. You'd have to rescind yeah, a prior action. So I, I, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just trying to get some things done. We were yeah. combining it with another department uh, disposition and making it easy. That's all. <coughs> I had, uh, you know, the the memory of John Reza and his needing assistance yeah. on something. I, well, I automatically I thought it was not. Well, last I remember, we, we were going to put it okay. on Craigslist, okay, so that didn't happen, and so well, I was last soliciting bids from a newspaper article, so that yeah. didn't happen. Because they, well, they want, yeah. they want, you know, people will, will buy it for the medals So, they don't need, need well, to know if we, we well, can hold off valuable it. time here tonight to discuss something that should have been done three times ago last year. Okay, um, apparently we don't have any formal agreements to handle water main breaks. You know, I was discussing this. This was something that come, came up over a year ago. I explained that any time that you use a company to uh, do a water main break, you want to make sure that we have the certificates of insurance, um, you know, naming the town of Raleigh as additional insurer, the prevailing wage rates are all set in place. Um, I know that some of the former staff employees here had indicated in a meeting with me that they were working on that, but I <clears throat> found out that, that that's not the case. I thought we had three different pieces when water was here. We had three different companies that gave, gave us stuff. I haven't seen the insurance certificates. Yeah, so we need to do it right, range. so let's just get that thing going. Let's, let's put out another bid for that, for so, an emergency um, water main, water distribution type work you, for the town of Raleigh. Okay, we'll get some prices in and have, um, and I'll work with the primary operator on that because I think they have some, they'll have some sense of what some of the needs are of what you would want a company to, do, to respond within X amount of time yeah, we've already, we've already went for an emergency. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. no one can seem to find any of this information. Well, no, well let me tell you what, uh, as my recollection is, is that we got, say, three or four companies to give us pricing to be able to come in here, and then the, the, uh, the process was, if we had a water main break, uh, how long would it take them to respond, including, you know, uh, the evening of, uh, July 3rd, okay, and you know, holidays and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, they need to be yeah. contractually obligated to respond. Obligated to respond. Yeah, we had set up something if somebody didn't answer within five ten minutes, we, we went to the yeah. next person yeah. on, the, okay. on the list. Yeah. So we had, you know, uh, not much interest on in it. We asked them to, to, to provide costs on that. And so if, you know, it was a rotational type thing, if, if mm -hmm. somebody wasn't able to respond, then they could... Yeah. Call to the next person. So. But everything was on file here. I don't know if Carmen saw that, but the 
No. It's okay. it's in here somewhere, but I, okay. I, I wouldn't be able to point it out. But so. Did you sign contracts? Do you remember with any of these companies? I don't know. It was actually a contract. So. I know we did get bids, but man, we got bids three and four. They came in, you know, did because, more. So they weren't uh, executed agreements. It, it would have been companies. at the time that Laura was acting as superintendent. Okay. I, yeah, I know she was working on it, and no one can seem to find, um, you know, what the status is done. And I want to make sure that it's done properly, because of insurance reasons, prevailing wage rates, and everything else. Okay, so we'll work on that probably with Carmine. He can help me on that. Sure. Um, we have a hydrant replacer program in the fiscal 14 capital budget. We need to get these hydrants purchased before the end of the fiscal year. We brought this up with Mark Griffin a few months ago, and alerted him to that. I don't. I don't know if he started the process of purchasing it, but with the current staff now, um, with with two uh, water operators, while well, we can purchase the hydrants, um, I'm thinking we probably need a company to actually install them. I, I just don't think we can tie up two water operators now with all the work that's being done with the water treatment plant. So I'm trying to get some ideas from the board on that so that we would have a vendor install these hybrids. You know, we have the money, it's in your capital budget. The capital budget I mean, we, we funding ends on We can order the hybrids and have them, have them come in, but I mean, if we're going to be hiring somebody, I mean, we get enough guys to do it. Okay, I want it, you know, but if you're, um, that's fine. We'll, we'll have more hydrants that you're purchasing in fiscal 15. What, four, four a year, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know what the plan was. Well, we should have four in stock, and so Mark and uh, Glenn were talking about, you know, their preference at the time. It was about two months ago, which one they wanted, because we only have eight to choose from for the town. So yeah, they all have brand, brand they, they wanted to, to keep so that everybody would right. the same or something. They, they wanted about to, they, Well, Mark wanted to have two brands so yeah. they could price one against the other, so we wouldn't get, you know. The, the problems we have. Yeah, I think they, they came up with two, two brands, but I don't know what the brands were. Yeah, well, I can email to Mark Griffin, we can find out the brands. I yeah. think we should have purchased four hydrants and have them here. And then as they get time, they can put one in today and one in two weeks if they want. Once they get the staffing, the staffing. Exactly. Yeah. We'll have them, I, I we'll just have don't them know what you're uh, If you would, were expecting the fiscal year. them to be purchased and installed, by June 30th, which oh, is... Oh, we don't have big admin as long as we've got them. As long as you're, you're understanding that, that that's... I just don't see how that's going to happen. I'm just trying to make sure you don't lose the fiscal exactly. 14 money. We right. can get the hybrids, but there's no way to do this in-house right now. Right. Because so we, the only thing we can do I right mean, now... We have is one operator going on vacation, even though you're having some fill-in with uh, Weston and Samson for four hours a day. I just yeah, can't, can't yeah. see this so, kind of a project. Yeah. So we need to purchase the, the hydrants. We okay. just got to know what their uh, maybe Glenn remembers. We can I can talk to Glenn tomorrow. Okay. All right. That, yeah, that would be good. So we, we just don't want to lose that. Um, uh, the well station two has a new um, sodium hydroxide tank. It was recently installed as part of the water treatment plant upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, the tank is too small. It needs to be filled at a minimum of every 13 hours while well two is running. It's, at, it's not practical. So I know that the idea is while well, the water treatment plant will be running, but um, you know that may happen soon, may not happen soon, or there may be problems where the water treatment plant is shut down. But the tank that's down there now, if it needs to be filled every 13 hours, um, you know, we have a, an exposure here for some problems. Um, the, the water operators brought it up, and one had to come in at 2 o'clock in the morning to fill it. Um, so you're going to think of these things in a broader perspective. You know, you get somebody on duty and they're coming in at 2 o'clock in the morning for four hour minimum to fill a tank up. Um, it, it doesn't seem practical. Um, apparently, we need a larger tank. Um, we could purchase this tank, maybe $500 or so. Um, and we can do this in the capital budget for well, too. There was is, some is there enough room for it to fit in there, bigger tank? I'm told by the water operators that they think that would be the case. I mean, I, I don't want to do any change orders or anything. For whatever reason, the, the, it was spec'd out to be a certain size, and it seems to be not sufficient to handle 
That is it. That's, that's kind of surprising. It's remarkable because this is the first time I've ever heard of it. Yeah, my, what I'm saying is we want to make sure a bigger tank is going to fit into the spot that it has to go. Yeah, they said it was plenty of room for the tank. Okay, so uh, how many gallon tank is in there now? I don't know. I just know it has to be filled. Okay. Every and, uh, 13 hours. So 13 hours cycle. So there's a big drawer and well, too. So they're filling it the first time. Less than 13 hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's why I just, I just, I, I feel like this is a concern. And well, I they, they switched from sure a powder you know. chemical, I think, to a liquid, didn't they? Uh, that. Come on. I don't know. You guys remember? It's a liquid. We switched. Kind of thing, but it was all all to do with the plant coming online. Yeah, it's a liquid. That's why they had to put the tank in. No, what I'm saying is, it, originally it was supposed to be all right because the, the plant was coming online, and that wasn't going to be working as bad. So, so is a new tank, Bob? Your recollection? Okay. So it's a new small tank. Yeah. Well, it's too small, obviously, because it's the okay. So the conditions were up in the day. day uh, no, what, 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 what we're saying is, it was originally supposed to be all right with the other plant running. That's but now that two is working harder, but yeah, well, food supply and all the water. And you know, and I just I look at the worst case scenario, especially in the water side of things here. Um, you know, so even if a year from now, okay, everything's right, but we have to take turn the water treatment plant offline for whatever reason. I don't know. And you're stuck in the situation once again. You have you have to have an employee monitor the situation. I, I consider it to be well. Kind the of primary a, operator has been the person making sure that things were you know. Yeah. So we, 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 you know, we got to get going on that. What's the... So is the board in agreement that we can pursue and purchase, a, you know, a larger tank? Definitely a larger tank, as long as we got room for it to fit in there. Yeah, well, well I'm mean, change. They can, apparently, they're capable of doing it. They can purchase it. They can install it. Um, and we can fund it under the capital budget. But okay. we have money set aside as well, too. I, I just, I just am concerned, and I, I think that you're probably too thinking about this. If something well, it sounds like a, there's a need there, so okay. So they've identified a need to, to, to uh, can, you know, just for the record, the, why don't we have a motion on that then and a vote? We'll make so. that motion, we get a thing. Okay. For a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And if it comes back with the prices and much higher, like more than a thousand dollars, I'll come right back to the board and make sure. Well, it a, uh, I was well, told I'll, probably I'll find out more details. I was told it was probably about five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars um, for a tank? I don't know. That's, That's probably right. plastic. Um, in in light of um, you know the warm day yesterday, the, the heavy draw on the well to yesterday, um, I, we just Karen and I were thinking it may be good to. Uh, just, you know, start having the water board think about, you know, water conservation. I know there's no issues with uh, the Parker River Basin or any drawer around that, but because we're in the situation that we're in with well two um, running to full capacity and the situation with the water treatment plant, um, maybe just if you want to start thinking about in, the, in a couple of weeks or so water conservation issues, um, because if it if the situation is prolonged with the contractor at the treatment plant. How long does it take to get a notification on? Could it go about with the uh, bills? Uh, well, I think you, you always use signage and, um, you know, there was sort of a, a, a non-binding approach in the you know beginning just to do more of a publicity. I think we, before we start putting restrictions yeah, on I, I don't think we should at least get all the hydrants drained and they see us. Well, that's, that's the other thing. Hydrants and we tell them not to use it. That's exactly what they said. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. They said in a couple of weeks, but just they asked if I could, you know, draw it to your attention, start thinking about it because of the situation that we're in and if we get some more hot days. There's a lot of strain as well. Okay. All right. That well was working double time. Yeah, and, and that's what's, you know, going to be a problem if it continues. Tank cleaning, um, Barbara Cook from Western and Samson has conferred that we can get this done as long as the tank is not drained. This is because we have all this going on with the water treatment plant. So uh, we have a proposal from Underwater Solutions, and Carmine has that. He um, went out and uh, followed through on that. So we would need the board to approve this. Uh, we're also working with the light department to see if they can provide us with a bucket truck. Um, so they, they were, they're going to look at the road um, and make sure that they can get up there. Um, they drop the diver in to the tank to clean it. So that's the way it's done. And um, this, ha this is part of the capital plan. It's funded for this fiscal year. So the money um, needs to be spent 
um, before June 30th. Okay, see these guys are on a matter of place that, uh, do they want to Look at the uh, road to see if they can get their equipment up the road. Yeah, they'll have to come and check it out. Okay, so they're going to come and check it out? Yeah, okay. Must, yeah. Well, I'd like to see a motion that we hire this outfit you know, to, to, uh, to do the tank cleaning, uh, but I want to make sure that uh, they can make, up, make it up to hell. So they should be able to get this thing accomplished, you know, in the next. Did we get any more than one bid? Uh, that, that's all uh, right. I didn't hear that from. Couple of the but we did. Oh yeah, three. Dry bar. We tried last fall. I think we got some bids last fall. But I think this this was the outfit. No, I just want to make sure that we did. He, he solicited. He didn't hear back, and um, because of the urgency of trying to get this work done before June 30th, um, and it's under ten thousand dollars. No, I just want to make sure that we did yep. try anyway. Yep. No, I just want to make sure that. So what, you know, the motion call. would be that to hire them immediately. And, but to make sure that they can get up the hill before we die. Okay. So that means they have to get out and they have to look at that road. This is, they, 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 they need to get up the roads. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve this agreement, this contract to uh, hire this company to clean the tank. And we don't think they can get, we can get them up the road. We will get them up the road. Not for sure to around. The back hole in the back hole. Nothing the D9 won't take care of. Yeah, we just had the um, next cell monocle decommissioned and brought down. I mean, we had huge but equipment up there just. A I weeks believe ago. the problem last fall was that they had a trailer and the trailer couldn't clear some of the obstructions on the roadway surface on that thing. So they didn't want to take their trailer up and ruin it. So they couldn't get up there. So, you know, a D9 is not going to get them up there, you know, tow them up there or. So you'd have to improve the road. So then we're looking at improving the road, which I don't have a problem with that. But I'll do that. It's all that was up there, Tim. Yeah. D9. Yeah. Took them right up the hill. It was a gravel grade. Yeah. Didn't, didn't get them up there. Okay. So we need to get that coordinated, too, if that's a problem. So first of all, get them in there and have them look at the thing before they come here. Because yeah. they need the road. Well, uh, I, I think. I think the burdens are going to be on them. I mean, at this point, I, I, you know, well, this will be I, I don't, don't want to okay. sit there and tell a vendor you may have some obstacles here. Um, let them tell us. No, right. we have to get the highway department to see if they can go up there and do something. You know, you know in, in, in the, the future, area. I don't know if John Reza had a, um, a maintenance plan for that road, but since the water tower is there, you know, it, it should be part of you no know, different than the wells or whatever. You want to make sure you have proper access at all times, and you. The water department um, should include that in, in their list of areas that they want to make sure they have clear okay, and free so access to. Okay. So if we get a small problem, we'll get them up there. Okay. So then, you know, uh, maybe Ron could look at the road and make sure it's passable. Okay, there's a motion from Stu Dalzell. I'll second. Thank you. Aye. Okay. Um, uh, some of the personnel matters. Um, oh, actually, one other water treatment plan. Um, I wanted to confirm: Does the water board wish to have the SCADA monitor, as part of the water treatment plant um, communications unit? So there's a large, almost like a television monitor, in the um, in the room uh, where the water operators are in the back. Mr. Smith apparently told. Um, the contractors that it was to go in the operator's room off the kitchen where they dropped that, Isn't that why we? I just want to make sure that? that's where you. This I is thought that's why they changed that around and, and did work in there. Okay. It was for that to go in there. So. A year ago. I don't know. I'm, I'm asking because these are decisions that the water board needs to make. Okay. So. so if that's the case, I'm just confirming that. That's why that room, you can see that there was some work done in there. And okay, this is off the back kitchen. Mm -hmm. Where the operators work, so right. far side of the building. Oh yeah. There, no, I, I had it over there. This no, well, oh, this one over here, the old kitchen, is where it was originally. That's what the the plan was a year ago. Well, that's not what I'm hearing. It's in the operators' room. The operator doesn't work there. They come. Well, here. they did. That was the operators' room till the garage was done. And that's why that was done over there. I the think we ought to room. look at this in a more intelligent manner. I think we ought to look at where. Well, it would, I don't know if it would make sense to have this in where the accountant is. I think the the primary water the water operators need to, to see this. Well, no, sure. well the superintendent or somebody. So you. Well, the superintendent, but 
the other thing is that um, somebody's got to be here to look at it. If the, you know, if the guys are on the field doing various tasks, and there's nobody here to look at it here, and there's nobody in the future, hopefully everything will be running, um, you know, unmanned all the time. You know, certainly there's going to be some manning involved with the treatment plant, but if somebody has um, sees the red lights go up, then they're going to make some. I mean, I have no problem with what it is. I know that was reworked over there. That's where it was originally going to go. But well, it makes no difference to me where it goes. Well, in knowing that that's where the accountant works, um, and she's not paid and equipped to know uh, to read this monitor and all the various components of things flashing. So you, it, you know, the expectation is is that water operators are going to be fully um, trained, and the SCADA system will know and discern when when there's uh, issues that are being flagged on this system. So I, that's why we need to make sure that the water board is clear on where exactly and, and I... I yeah, it's going to go out there, we, maybe we need to just have an alarm that goes off in Cameron's office so if nobody's here, he can call one of them and tell them to get back here. The or something, you know what I mean? and, and also the SCADA system will run right actually to their um, emergency system, I believe. It um, does. And the reason we, they're trying to figure out where they want to put it is because it's going to require wire whether the wiring is installed now or not, if it was pre-planned to put it somewhere, or whether you're going to move it from somewhere else, so it, it, then it'll have to be changed, it'll have to be wired. So it's just they kind of figure out what they're going to do with it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't want to assume that it goes in the accountant's office and if the, the operators are in the, coming in and they're in the back room and they're working or they're doing paperwork at the desks, or if you want it, the superintendent's going to be saying, I, I'm not sure. I just want to, why don't you think about it and let me know specifically where it needs to go as soon as possible. Yes, yeah, since we're not that familiar with operations, uh, I think you should, you know, at least I can talk to uh, our operators and see where they think it'd be most beneficial for this okay. this building here. So, so. Well, why don't I ask um, Peter and, and um, where he thinks that Glenn may have been indicating it when he said That sounds like a good solution. Yeah. yeah. I just, you know. I, defer, I would defer to Peter, the, the operators. Yeah, because I know that the okay. operators room wouldn't be. Any I'm, I'm thinking, my, my mind is thinking, no, we need, you know, coverage. and But, you know, if they probably already have the alarm set up so that the phones are ringing and something goes amok, so. Okay. I don't know. All right. I, I really have to run. So I have three more things. Um, the Water Superintendent Screening Committee, we're trying to schedule a meeting and we have some dates from the other members. Primary water operator position. Um, I believe we have five applications. I would um, ask that I, I just uh, sit down with Stu Dalzell, who's had a lot of experience on, on the Board of Selectmen and Personnel Board, to review those and present um, candidates for next week's meeting. Okay. How about an alumni person? Seasonal labor position closes today. There's one application. So um, we'll check uh, the mail tomorrow morning, make sure nothing got put in our mailbox this afternoon and present that person for an interview next week. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Okay, yeah. all right, thank as you. As far as the uh, primary, uh, the secondary operator, well, but, uh, as far as the primary operator posting, uh, the two gentlemen that we have working for us are all both interested in applying for that position. I, I can't talk about applicants, so that's uh, private, okay. until they, they are agreed to go for a public interview. Okay. So I, I can't discuss anyone's names. Okay. People may have jobs now or things. So um, I will review them. If there's internal candidates, uh, absolutely, they will be put on the okay. list. Right. I think that would be the best thing. Okay. You know, Sounds good. Um, I presume you probably don't want any more than three. I mean, but yeah, you'll be. That's usually what we get. We always move it down to three. Uh, yeah. Them so in. we'll look for three, and then uh, you know, if other uh, others are qualified. Um, but to a lesser degree, you know, if there's other positions open in the future, we know we're going to need part time secondary. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. See you later. All right. Hey, can you just, just one other thing? That the 25K for the uh, operator, that'll get you about 40 days. See you, Bob. So if you're going to have to run 90 days, uh, you might have to find some other 
funded. <coughs> it's based okay, so what on you? your uh, about eighty dollars an hour. Eighty per hour, right. forty hours a week. Right. You will want that. Well, we don't have to have the highest person. We can have. Um, right. I, mean, I, I don't know what. So we could, you know, we might be able to get somebody for sixty. I think, you know. I think we just have to see what the quotes are. But and yeah. he, I think we need to use global, like that list of global ones that we had before that came in and talked to us to make sure that everybody gets a, something in the mail so maybe we get some different prices now. Maybe somebody to shop in the pencil a little bit better. Okay, so let's go on to the purchase orders. Well, why don't we do um, A by one of these old goods and then that's done. How would we make out them? Did you get any uh, feedback from Cat Caterpillar? No. Oh, let's but table it. Let's table it till next time. Uh, okay. Purchase orders. Well, you were supposed to do this, right? So. Remember you called me, so I can do it. So we got 15 grand on the hydrants. Yeah, just call me and I guess I'm in there. That's not a problem. No, is this one for a certain what was the latest, uh, just for start? What was the latest uh, break on the hydrants a couple weeks ago? Where was that? So I don't know. Down here, we're going to put Speaking of hydrants. If we do have it. Job. We should put down going to such and such street address or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Excuse me, comment. Speaking of hydrants, yes. how are we making out on the uh, one up here, up to Havel Street? Uh, the restitution? Yes. Um, we spoke to the police chief and he says he's working on it with the DA, so just waiting to get back. This is him. stop. Oh, yeah. Stuff. And representative from the DA's office that they work with? You haven't been there. Can I just claim to call you? It's in the process. Yeah, it's in the court. Yeah. So okay. we're it's just so waiting for a response. It, you know, to work with. And if it's for a certain address, it'll come up. He's going to put it on the thing for us. It'll be for such and such street address or whatever. And this one here, we get um, This is also when we get a patch. Carmen, this is going to be the last time we're going to look at purchase orders for our meeting. So if it, if it comes in this afternoon, sure. just tell him that he's going to come in you know, the next couple of days and have him go through this. Yeah, I know, but we're not going to do this again enough. Exercise for tonight. Oh, oh. 
Yeah, do what you do. I'll get the yours. Okay. Um, so in the future, we're going to, you know, Carmen, you can present this in Roy's box. Yeah. And this is how yeah. Yeah. Sign commitment. I don't understand that way. You see, there's some more bag here. We have a small dump truck. And That's why I was asking you. Once again, it's just something that um, <coughs> is corrections from the previous commitments we had? Correct. Okay. What's today's date? The, uh, I think. Did, did you take one? Yes, ma'am. It was a very funny sign. Okay, so where do these templates come from? Pension. Okay, so when they put this thing, the sign is 13th day of. Should be May 2014. Should you take the 20 out of there? Can you make them. Oh, I'll make them make an adjustment. Okay. You take one of them, you look at it. Oh, sweet, you're over there. Well, here's a commitment. I think that these commitments are uh, something that maybe wasn't on the uh, previous commitments and then they identified that there was some um, readings that weren't on the commitment, so they just found them and then they put them. That's why we're signing these things, okay? Now give it to me. He's already signed. All right. He hasn't signed this one. signature is required. If another uh, commissioner wants to review that, then it's fine. But it's going to come down to get it on the bill. So this is the initial paperwork that authorizes someone that's purchased something. Okay? We go on one week or two weeks to the next meeting. you got to go one week. you got to start interviewing people. So, so that will be the 20th. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, the amendments. I have some corrections on this. And uh, what we've done in the past, Carmen, is we have the superintendent go through this. So we want the initial of the superintendent on this before we look at this, okay? okay. So there's some comments by me, and I'll give you them. You can make those corrections. Did you happen to look at the thing? Yeah, I haven't had it yet. Okay. So they'll be presented to us at the next meeting. So what I want to do too is this. I want this. Uh, I want this more to reflect that actually what was said at the meeting. Okay. Okay. So you need to go back to that okay, tape. Sure. That was really on the meeting. Okay. Yeah. So we'll table that till the next meeting. Okay. Uh, that sounds like it's about it. Yeah. Have any, well, we get. The, oh, we. Carmen, do you remember uh, where the other hydrant was broken? What street it was on? I don't know. I just. Just aware of that. Uh, we had the Hayward Street one, but there was something last two weeks that was. Wasn't wasn't that up around um, Glen Street, Hillside up in the area? I don't know. There was another one. That one just wasn't sure though. I think I believe. The second the second one. Was. Yeah. I 
forget where it was now. I heard it was the end zone. So we need to have um, <coughs> four hydrants in stock. So could you remind me tomorrow to find out or talk with me and Len or in um, Peter to find out what's the uh, what was decided two months ago with uh, Mark's intervention, what models to get. Okay, I don't want to go get one model that they didn't suggest. So, so Glenn and um, Mark had discussed what's the best model to get our needs. And uh, so there was two uh, manufacturers out there. So we want to get either one, one of each. Maybe two or two of each or whatever. Excuse me, do we have one in stock now? I don't know. There, there was, unless we had got the other side action. We should only have one in stock. That actually a couple of weeks ago, I might have used that one. It was out there in the window. Okay, so I have a motion to um, adjourn. We're going to go meet on the 20th, correct? Meeting next meeting on the 20th? I would mm -hmm. like to say if there's not a hydrant out there, then we should. What's that? There's not a hydrant out there. We should purchase five, so we always have one on hand. Uh, oh, I agree with that. I mean, I, I know those went out there all went along, but when they had that accident, we well, we're we gonna we're we gonna go with this budget line now, right here, fifteen thousand. We gotta. Right. Okay. So if five gets us to fifteen thousand, that's fine. Okay. So is that clear? Yeah, it is. We have fifteen thousand on the budget. One is probably going to be taken up with that one on Havel Street because it's going to be a long time before we get that paid for. So we already bought one hundred. Okay. What are they now? Eighteen hundred a piece. Uh, it went up a lot. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.